Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to the Family Plot. Gardening in the Mid-South, thanks for joining us. Do you think you have the biggest pumpkin in Shelby County? How about the best looking roses? Winning a blue ribbon at the county fair is an American tradition, and with the Delta Fair just around the corner today, we're gonna to tell you how you can join the fun and enter your prized creation. And it's the time of year when we're seeing webs and trees. What causes them? Are they harmful to our trees? And how do we deal with them? Mr. D is here to give us the answers. All that and more is just ahead on the family plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for the family plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Jan Hamilton. Ms. Jan is the Director of Crafts for the Delta Fair. And Mr. D is here. Thanks for joining howdy, us. Howdy. Hi, Ms. Jan. The Delta Fair is just around the corner. Can you believe it? Less than a month, wow. Chris. So when is it exactly? August 29th through wow. September 7th. Okay. As you know, we move into the West Pavilion August 22nd to get set up for all our great contests. And the Delta Fair is at the Agri Center. At right? the Agri Center okay. here in Memphis. Wow, how about that? Now, can you give us a little background on gardening and crafts? We started in 2007, Chris. Okay. And our contests have grown every year, yeah. as you know. I do. All right. Um, what kind of uh, gardening contest do you have? We have everything from your homegrown vegetables okay. to your container plants. We're adding design this year for those ladies that like to take things and, and make it beautiful. Okay. Of course, we have all of our cut contests with the roses. Uh, we have youth and adult. Okay. So now last year, Luke Scott brought in uh, our best of show with uh, some original unusual gourds okay. for the youth <laughs> and uh, it's always just exciting to see the biggest pumpkin you know yes. the prettiest fern yes we just have a contest for anybody that's doing some gardening okay so what is the range of things that people can enter uh, they can bring in their container plants okay. they can bring in their homegrown we added field grown last year. I We're remember. trying to get our farmers back involved. We'd love to have some soybeans and cotton cool. and corn stalks and all the things that they grow for us. Okay. Uh, now, how can folks enter? Because we definitely want them to get that information. Okay, on our website, okay. deltafest.com. Deltafest.com. They com. can download the booklet or just look at it, get their entry form, and okay. get it sent in August 14th. Now, a lot of our uh, horticulture people say, well, I don't know if it's going to be ready. <laughs> Enter, send me that form anyway. That way, if you do get to bring it in on one of our contest days, your tags are ready, we put them on, and it just makes it a quick process. So if you think you're going to enter it, put it on the form and send it in to Okay. And one more time, when do they need to send that form in? August, sure meet that 14th. August 14th. And now if they need a booklet, Chris, those are available at y'all's office yes, at the Agri Center. Yes, at the Extension Office. You can come in and get one of those booklets. Okay. Now, you always have Master Gardeners involved, and, and we definitely thank you for that. So how do Master Gardeners play a role uh, in the Delta Fair? We love gardener. our Master Gardeners, Chris. They are so helpful yeah. to come in and answer questions yes. from the public. They're sitting there. If you walk up and say, why do I have, you know, a web in my tree? Yeah. <laughs> you know, why won't right. my colas grow? Or, you know, why aren't my tomatoes growing? They are sitting there the whole 10 days of the fair. They come in in shifts mm -hmm. and uh, we just appreciate them so much. We definitely, again, appreciate, you know, the opportunity. I'm usually there from time to time to help answer some of those questions. Miss Mary is there as yes. well. So we always enjoy that and the Master Gardeners do too. 
Now, I understand you're going to have horticulture demonstrations. So what kind we of demonstrations are. do you have this year? We're excited this year. We're having Mr. Michael Seal with the Funny Farm. He's bringing in his okay. Bromlads. And uh, we've got uh, Miss Celia coming from Dixon Garden. She's going to talk okay. about okay. pirating plants. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to go out and steal them, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but she's going to show you how that you can, you know, Take plants and make more with those, okay. which is a great thing to do. Uh, we're going to have a lady come in and talk about herbs, growing okay. them, and what we can use, okay. different uses of That'll them. That'll be a popular uh, discussion, so, I'm sure. uh, And some of our master gardeners are going to talk about composting. You know, okay. that's a great thing to do. Yes, it is great. We advocate that on this show, but it is good. Now, you're going to have 4-H's involved as well? Our 4-H's are great. Good. They bring Good. in lots of uh, garden items for us. They bring in culinary. They bring in crafts. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, we're a sponsor with the 4-H Congress in Nashville mm -hmm. every year. Good deal. And, I mean, our 4-Hers are our future. Okay. As, you know, they, they make things better. Yeah, as I see Mr. D over there shaking his hand, <laughs> head, he knows all about that. I'm sure. with that. Good deal. Uh, do you have any other educational uh, things that may be going on? We do. Okay. Our educational expo that we started last year okay. gives an opportunity for schools to bring field trips. And as you yeah. know, our FFA and 4-Hers are big in our livestock shows mm -hmm. over at the barn. Uh, and we have a brand new poster contest. Good. Our DECA, FCCLA, and FFA poster contest. Last year, Power Center Academy mm -hmm. was our first place winner in the DECA contest. Good deal. And we just want to get the word out to all of our schools. We would love to have field trips. Those are available on okay. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday okay. at the fair this year. And they can come in and uh, have a great day. We have FFA Day and 4-H Day okay. on Thursday, September 4th. Uh, our homeschooler day, you know, a lot of our 4-Hers are homeschoolers. Yes, yes. That is on Friday, September 5th. Okay. And uh, we just have great days planned for them. Okay. Now let me ask you this. So what are the days that the plants are going to be judged? We have two contests. Okay. If you bring field-grown homegrown, you know, your vegetables, and your 10-day exhibits, like your big ferns, uh, your uh, fairy gardens or okay. dish gardens. Uh, you bring all that on Friday, August 29th, okay. from like 8 to 10. We judge them that morning, and by the time the fair is open, you can come see if you won that blue ribbon. The mm -hmm. next Thursday, September 4th, okay. same thing, 8 to 10 a.m., bring your cut flowers. Bring your roses, your foliage, your herbs, and that's when the ladies are going to bring the design. So again, now we'll be open while this is going on because okay. we open at 9 o'clock that day. But uh, as soon as we get the judging completed, they'll be able to see if they won. Okay, so people can come in, the general public, and, and take watch a look. what's going on. Wow, how about that? And last year I did get a chance to judge the uh, field-grown crops. So uh, we had a good time with that. Well, we and we appreciate our Fayette UT staff too because they come in and help us, you yeah. know, with these contests. Yeah, I think Jeff Vi was there with yes. me. Turn your ass for Fayette County. And uh, before we leave, one more time, when and where? August 29th through September 7th at the Agri Center. Get those forms in by August 14th. And if you need those booklets again, you can get them at the Extension Office or get them online. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Thank you for having us, Chris. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Mr. D, looks like we have some specimens on the table. Yeah, we do. What do we have? Uh, here in this taking up most of the table is a uh, <laughs> uh, fall webworm. Uh, this is, uh, fortunately, this insect only has one generation per year. Okay. Uh, this 
particular group of fall webworms has pretty much done its damage, it looks like, and they probably already finished and pupated. Either that or, or they're out on the rest of the tree eating since they ran out of leaves on this branch. <laughs> what happened, there was a small egg mass right here at the end of the, at the terminal end of the branches uh, several weeks ago that hatched, and uh, these webworms just, they spun the web. It's a protective mechanism to keep birds from eating them, and and to protect them from things like that, and then they move out and they, they uh, uh, can completely defoliate mm -hmm. a small tree uh, and some large trees. They really like walnut trees mm -hmm. and pecan trees and persimmon trees. They'll also get on persimmons, mm -hmm. but they'll get on just, you know, a lot of different kinds of trees. Very unsightly. I've never seen fall webworms kill a tree. But this time of the year, a, tr a, plant, a tree doesn't need to be defoliated because, you know, from now until fall, yeah. until frost, it's storing up energy for next year and, you know, trying to make it through the winter and all those kind of things. It really doesn't need to be defoliated. We have a host of insecticides that will take <laughs> care of host. fall webworms. But what I would do, if I had a history of problems with, with fall webworms, I would probably use... Uh, uh, BT yeah. uh, in yeah, advance, too. you know, uh, July, early July, mm -hmm. spray the, before you even see the webs, you know, spray the, the tree that you've had a history of problems with, with BT, and that that way uh, it will not harm any of the beneficial insects, right. and when these little critters hatch out, the, the bacteria will be there, and then when they consume the leaf, it'll give them a little stomach ache and they'll die. <laughs> But there are a couple of, or several products out there that contain BT, Dipel and Javelin right. are a couple of them. There are others. And definitely read the labels on that. Now, yeah. before you read the rest of those, um, how about if it rains, will it wash off the? It'll wash off probably most of it. If you direct the spray to the underside of the leaf, uh, some oh. of it will stay on there. Okay. I mean, keep in mind, BT is Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria. Right. And it washes off the tree about as easily as it washes off as you wash bacteria off of your hands. Okay. So you know when they tell it. you to wash your hands, they say scrub, 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 scrub. Right. You know, don't just rinse. <laughs> okay. And so uh, the BT is probably a little bit more stable than some of the other pesticides. Okay. And, you know that we put on on plants, but also a Dersban, Orthene, uh, several different products that contain permethrin. Uh, seven carbaryl. These uh, mm. in, little caterpillars have chewing mouth parts, and, and carbaryl works well for those. Uh, Tempo decathlon, Tempo SC Ultra, Tau Star, Scimitar, Diazinon, Conserve SC, Spintor, Mimic, and Acilprin are all on from the Red Book. Right. Uh, they're they're from uh, 2014 Red Book, and those are all products that'll take care of uh, of the fall webworm. Okay. Let me ask you this: Are we seeing them earlier this year? Not really. Not really. Okay. Not really. They uh, they are a problem from you know June to to now, you know later on in the fall, and I don't know why they call them fall webworms. <laughs> right. They ought to be called summer webworms. <laughs> right. In my opinion. I mean, <laughs> right. I agree with uh, that. <laughs> but but fortunately, there is only you know one generation per year, and and you can control them if you uh, you don't see this as a problem. I mean, they love walnut trees, but a commercial pecan orchard that is undergoing a three week Spray schedule about every 21 days they'll spray the pecan trees. Uh, this is not a problem. Okay, because, so that's uh, not you know, a problem. So you'll see commercial pecan orchards. Uh, you It'll won't see fine. webworms there. Okay. Now what about eastern tent caterpillars? Eastern tent caterpillars. Now that's early in the year. Early. They ought to be called uh, oh, gosh, spring yeah. caterpillar. Uh, <laughs> and and those uh, are the webs that develop in the limb crotches. Mm -hmm. that, you know, down close to the center of the tree. And and they also like. Uh, uh, a lot of the crab apples, the, fl the flowering fruit trees, uh, 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 you know, yeah, you know ornamental, ornamental pears, Bradford yeah. pears, mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, and uh, but they're gone, and we right. only have one generation of those right. per year. But okay. th they are often confused uh, eastern tent caterpillars with the fall webworms, but because they both have webs in the right. trees. But if you keep in mind the fall webworms. The webs are out toward the end of the branches, and uh, eastern tent caterpillars, the webs are toward the inner portion of the tree. Uh, and, uh, you know, let me go on. With eastern tent caterpillar, uh, you can treat them with horticultural oil, with mm -hmm. a dormant spray early before the trees even leave out, okay. and uh, that will, you know, smother the okay. little caterpillars. So you can use horticultural oil. But also, BT that BT. we mentioned, Dipel and Javelin. 
And then several of the same insecticides here, Tempo, Decathlon, Talstar 7, Carbaryl, you know, basically the same, the same things so, we mentioned okay. uh, for uh, the fall webworm will also take care of the eastern tent caterpillar. Okay. And uh, lastly, bagworms. Bagworm, yeah, bagworm. You know, that's what we got here. Let me lay them well, lay out here. <laughs> Don't I'll put them too them. close to Miss Jan now. We do hold these. You know, you know, I think they make good jewelry. You know, oh, oh, man. That. Look at them. Pretty good little, Gosh. I mean, they're, they're little pendants. I'm you creative. But, hmm. uh, but it's really too late right now to do anything if you have an infestation of bagworms on your you know evergreen junipers arborvita mm -hmm. or arborvita how do you pronounce that arborvita arborvita yeah. or whatever uh, because that is pretty much impregnable this little this you, you, you ever try to take one of these I'll apart? try it's tough you ever try to take one apart it's pretty tough yeah. hi I, I can't believe i even tore any of it off they're very very tough they're they're you cannot get an insecticide in there. And what we have in here pretty much is uh, the female has sealed that off and she's going to lay eggs and then she's going to die. Yeah. And this little bag is going to remain on the tree through the winter. It's going to survive freezing temperatures, yes. <laughs> rain, snow, sleet, <laughs> ice, and everything. And yeah. next spring, around May, the little critters are going to hatch out and they will be very, very small mm -hmm. and start feeding. You won't be able to see them and you won't see the damage, but they will also have a little bitty small bag attached to them. Mm -hmm. And as they get big, bigger and larger, so does the, bag. the bag gets larger. <laughs> the uh, uh, time to control them with insecticide is in May, you know, in June, right. you know, early. Uh, right now, uh, the only thing you can do now is pick them yeah, off. Pick them off. And don't just pick them off and throw them down because they'll continue, you know, they'll survive down there probably unless you step on them or, yeah. or whatever. But uh, pick them off and, uh, you know, uh, if you have a burn pit, burn them or put them in the trash. Wow. Okay. All right. So there you have it. It's your backwards. All right. This is our Q&A session. And Ms. Jane, you jump in there with us. All right. <laughs> you got something to add. Okay. Here's our first uh, email. Okay, and it's from Billy, and she writes, Some weeks ago, a discussion took place concerning deterring raccoons. Evidently, their feet are tender, and they don't like to walk on what? Broken glass? <laughs> Broken glass? I don't know. Gravel. I'm thinking prickly vines. Prickly vines? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm thinking prickly vines, you know, pumpkin vines, squash vines, because of, I've heard that before, because of their tender feet. They don't like that. Huh. Mm -hmm. But they sure like eating out of those gardens. Oh, well, they sure do like eating out of your garden, <laughs> your sweet corn and everything else they can get their hands on. And they, yeah. they, and they also like drinking out of a hummingbird feeder, too. Mm -hmm. They really like sugar water. Mm -hmm. They really do. Yeah. Uh, but that's interesting. Uh, I, you know, I, I guess I do know that their little forepaws are sensitive and they use them, they will, they will catch stuff and they'll actually kind of like, you know, almost you know, mess with it a little bit yeah. and then they sometimes use their little forepaws to feed themselves with. I know they'll do that. But also I've seen them running through the woods and I've seen them climbing yeah, trees them and, all of that. and uh, you know, they climb up on my deck. And it's not the softest thing in the world. So I, I don't know. I don't know about the little the prickly vines I've though. heard from the old timers. But I think in that discussion we were talking about, uh, you know, shredded pine needles, maybe, which is something again that's prickly. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so I, I think, Miss Billy, that's when we had that discussion. So. I don't know. I wouldn't count on that to control them. <laughs> no. I wouldn't count no, on if scattering food squash around, leaves and vines gonna, around to control nah, them. But that is one of those old timer <laughs> things. You know, you yeah. just plant that in front of your corn and stuff, but. There you go, Mr. Yeah, Billy. try that. Plant it around your sweet corn. See if, it <laughs> <laughs> See if it'll work for you. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we got another email from Tyler and Cindy. She says, where can I get a copy of the Red Book you've talked about on the family plot? Guess what, Tyler and Cindy? I brought the Red Book with me today. <laughs> and it is red, Mr. D. It is red, and it is literally bursting. <laughs> With information, it is. look at it that. Is bursting with information because we use it a lot. Yeah, a lot of folks think that doesn't exist, but that that is uh, 
that is uh, the, probably the most important reference mm -hmm. manual for extension agents and uh, a lot of other people. Yeah. It's updated every year. You yeah. see it's got 2014 yeah. on it. 2014. Uh, and uh, you know the thing that's kind of confusing is sometimes it's not red. <laughs> right, you're sometimes right. Sometimes it's yeah. orange, sometimes it's, it's green, yellow. but it's always, <laughs> it's always the red book. And uh, there are, se you know, there are sections in there for homeowners mm -hmm. and there are sections in there for co the commercial folks use also. And uh, if you're a homeowner and you want to see what commercial folks use, it's fine to take a look at it, but don't go try to buy it because right. most of the commercial folks have to have pesticide licenses mm -hmm. and things like that. How much is that? This is 40 bucks. Okay. How so much is it to get it off the inter internet? Free. Free. Okay. Yeah, that's free what I, I have. Internet. An, you know, I don't yeah. use a hard copy. I, I just go get what I need and you can print off the pages that you need. Print off what you need. Now, where can they do that, Chris? You can where? go to the UT Extension site and there's actually an order form on there as well. And it lets you know how many you can order. It tells you that these are 40 bucks. You can also order, you also order there's a CD. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to right. use a CD that comes with it. Uh, but yeah, it's $40. And it's definitely well worth it. I mean, it's pretty much the, you know, the Bible for uh, county extension agents. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, all the recommendations are, are there. And they're research-based recommendations, which exactly. is real important. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, utextension.tennessee.edu. In the search engine, type in Red Book. Up pops this information. It's got, it's got agricultural crops in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got uh, you know termite control stuff in there. It's just, uh, it's just, it's a wealth of information. It, it has a lot of information about uh, uh, the safe use of pesticides. It does, you know, mm -hmm. sure pesticide does. safety mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's, it's, a, it's a, just a wealth of information. Good book, and it's pretty much updated every year. So it's, it's, every year. it's real good. Sometimes updated in the middle of the year, as you and I did. Yeah, as we saw. Yeah, yeah. We saw. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, Tyler and Cindy. All right. Here's our next email. It's from Craig. The question from Craig is, what vegetable would come the closest to surviving the frost? Pretty good question. Hmm, it is. And if you go to our fall planting mm -hmm. chart, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, crops that you see on there uh, will survive pretty cold weather. I know uh, I did a little research and, and okay. saw that, uh, you know, spinach can take 20 degrees, turnips can take you can that. survive at 10 degrees, you know, so that's much more than the frost. But yes. The brassica crops mm -hmm. and, you know, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kohlrabi, garden, uh, English peas, garden peas. Wow. The early peas can survive frost. Oh, uh, but, you know, cauliflower, radishes, you know. Yeah, beets, uh, I know, can yeah, survive mm -hmm. real cold temperatures. Yeah. How about that? So What's that's why your... garden, gardening is a full-time job. Oh, I mean, if you do it right, you, know, mm -hmm. you, can, yeah. you, can, you can pretty much have something all year long. All year long. But I tell you what, the frost will knock out the majority of your warm season vegetables. Uh, the warm season ones, sure. you know, don't expect a homegrown <laughs> tomato in January. You know, that's not going to work. All right. Squash right. and things like that. You got that right. All right, Mr. Craig, there you have it. Here's our next question. And we're getting a lot of criticals at the extension office. Okay. So, what is the best way to control chipmunks? Is the call that we've been getting here lately, Mr. D. What about those old chipmunks? You know, that's tough. That's that's a tough, kind of a tough call. They're yeah, cute. It is. They're such cute little <laughs> furry cute? critters, and you kind of hate to bother them. But when they get into your house or they get into your attic, you know, they can really create problems. And and exclusion is one of the best ways to take care of that by using hardware cloth and things mm -hmm. like that, and use some of the repellents. Like uh, you know, moth balls, moth crystals, naphthalene, paradoxorbenzene okay. crystals, and things like that might help if they're in your house. You know, you can even use hardware cloth for digging. You know, in your plant beds, you can actually lay the hardware cloth on the ground, covered with ground, you know, with with soil, and and uh, that can kind of disrupt them a little bit. But yeah. you know, it, they're they're not. It's not the the rodenticides for mice and rats will kill them, but they're not. La it's not labeled for chipmunks, so okay. we can't recommend. Well, it's not that, for we okay. can't recommend that you use rodenticides for chipmunks, wow. which okay. is kind of a little interesting. They they can they can be a problem, um, but you know, exclusion is really about the only thing that we can promote. Wow. Now, my cats hang out under the bird feed hey. <laughs> and get my chipmunks. Okay, so that. So cats. And that's right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not illegal for a cat to eat a chipmunk. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're probably for but adaptation. But I like the chipmunk. Yeah, you like the cat too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. 
All right, quickly, Mr. D, we can get to this last question. It says, okay. my tomato plant leaves are turning brown and dying from the bottom to the top of the plant. What's happening? Early blight. Early blight. Early blight. You know that That's right, man. It's, if you're not, if you don't have your tomatoes under a regular program, and if you did this year with us getting rain yeah, once a week, you probably still have trouble with blight. Some of the varieties are a little more uh, resistant than others, but if you've got a problem, I would just make sure I go out there and spray with uh, with uh, chlorothalonil or mancozeb, mm -hmm. there are a couple of the, the fungicides that are, that are recommended. And I know chlorothalonil has a zero day waiting period, so every seven to 10 days. Okay, I appreciate that. No. Thank you, we're out of time. Be sure to connect with us. We'll send you weekly email updates about Family Plot. Just go online to wkno.org and sign up under Get Local Show Updates. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.